Russian President Vladimir Putin's current theory of victory in Ukraine is aimed at prolonging the fighting. He assumes that his occupying forces can outlast Western support for the Ukrainian armed forces and crush their resistance, winning a war of attrition. This is what analysts at the Institute for the Study of War ISW have pointed out. According to them, Russia will face serious, medium and long-term constraints that will undermine these strategic efforts of the aggressor. It is noted that the Kremlin has ordered its army to conduct a year-long offensive along the front line in eastern and northeastern Ukraine. They are aimed at depleting the defense forces and preventing Kiev from accumulating the necessary manpower and material resources to conduct counter-offensive operations that contradict the Russian Federation's Common Front initiative. Putin and the Russian military command likely view maintaining the All Front initiative as a strategic priority. They have shown themselves tolerant of protracted offensive operations that result in gradual, slow progress, far from their intended operational objectives. ISW assessed the aggressor's intentions. They explained that the Russian military is currently trying to eliminate the challenge to its initiative in the theater of military operations in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation following the Ukrainian offensive in early August 2024, while simultaneously maintaining offensive pressure in eastern Ukraine to achieve long-term operational goals. The intensified offensive of the Russian troops in the summer of 2024 to capture Pokrovsk and reduce the wider Ukrainian salient in the west of Donetsk region, experts believe, will reach its culmination in the coming months. Although it is possible that the command of the occupiers will continue to involve them in the general strategic efforts to maintain the initiative on the front line and exhaust the Ukrainian armed forces far beyond this point of operational culmination, regardless of the state of their combat capability. The victory theory of Putin's is based on the Russian armed forces conducting successive offensives over an indefinite period of time, but such attritional attacks will significantly weaken Russia's available manpower and material resources, so Russian forces will have to slow down the pace of the offensive at least in certain parts of the front, which will give the Ukrainian armed forces the opportunity to contest and possibly seize the initiative on the battlefield in these areas. ISW analysts expressed their conviction. Monstrous hurricanes Helene and Milton caused so much complex havoc that damages are still being added up, but government and private experts say they will likely join the infamous ranks of Katrina, Sandy and Harvey as super costly $50 billion plus killers. Making that even more painful is that most of the damage 95% or more in Helene's case was not insured, putting victims in a deeper financial hole. Storm deaths have been dropping over time, although Helene was an exception. But even adjusted for inflation, damages from intense storms are skyrocketing because people are building in harm's way, rebuilding costs are rising faster than inflation, and human-caused climate change are making storms stronger and wetter, experts in different fields said. Today's storms, today's events are simply vastly different from yesterday's events. One of the things that we're seeing is the energy content that these systems can retain is significantly greater than it used to be, said John Dixon, president of Aon Edge Insurance Agency, which specializes in flood coverage. In the last 45 years, and adjusted for inflation, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has counted 396 weather disasters that caused at least $1 billion in damage. 63 of those were hurricanes or tropical storms. The $50 billion mark for direct losses is a threshold that differentiates truly historic events, said Adam Smith, the economist and meteorologist who runs the list out of NOAA's National Center for Environmental Information in Helene Hit Asheville, North Carolina. Only eight hurricanes reached that threshold. Smith said he thought Milton and Helene have a very good shot of joining that list. When we start to get $50 billion or higher in total direct losses, included insured and uninsured losses, um, I think that's what that, that's an arbitrary threshold that really seems to differentiate truly historic events, 
within the hundreds and hundreds of billion dollars of disasters that we have uh, cataloged over the decades. So, so 50 billion and up. And I think that um, Helene and Milton will, will likely approach, if not exceed that threshold 